Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I want to do another video as an update to the conversation that I've had in a few other videos and implementations of dynamic formatting. Now with the addition of measure-based formatting that was added to measures last year, you can either do formatting basically at the visual level, historically with a calculation group, or at the measure level. Now what I've come up with is a solution of some clever calculation groups and measure level dynamic formatting in combination with each other to easily be able to keep it all off by default or per visual, even have the measures individually get automatic scaled formatting applied or have the entire visual itself get that applied all just by using the filter selection from the calculation groups. So I wanna show you this combo package practice that I developed. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So to start this video, I will mention that I'm using the dynamic formatting pattern for auto scaling that came from the SQL BI article in front of us here. I won't go into the details of all of the stuff that they talk about, so check out the article in the description down below if you want to read further into that. The focus of this will be showing how I can automatically and easily add either visual level calculation group applications for auto scaling or measure level ones. So we'll start and go through the outputs of this. So what I have over here in the right in the fields list is a calculation group for formatting and a bunch of calc items. Now, if I come over here to this visual, what I have is a filter on this visual where I have four different calculation groups that I could select from. I have scaled formatting with currency symbol per measure, scaled formatting per measure without the currency symbol, and then at the visual level, currency or no currency. Now this visual over here works per measure. I can either show the dollar value or I can show it with the non-dollar value scaled formatting. Both of them will scale the numbers in there. And if I have nothing applied, the measures just return the normal formatted value. In this case, with the currency symbol, but no scaling applied. Now I will start by just showing you what the calculation groups are over here and what these four things are. Because the reason I'm doing this is sometimes I want individual measures to have the formatting applied. But if I try to apply this to every single calc on the whole visual, we'll get some errors because I can't really apply scaled formatting as an example to this bullet chart or anything else that is using SVG code. So sometimes some of the measures need this turned on, but not all of them. So coming over to my model view here, let's take a look at the calculation groups that I have under the model. As I mentioned, I have four of them. So the first one here, the scaled formatting per measure, that is just the selected measure here. And notice there's no dynamic formatting string. It's just returning the original calculation, essentially, with a name for the calculation group of this, but no transformations or logic is in either of these first two. The skilled formatting per measure has that logic inside of the measure itself, which I will show you in a minute. So per measure for this one and this one, it has a name that I will eventually fetch in terms of that visual level filter selection, but nothing else dynamic applied in here. Now the skilled formatting per visual that does have the dynamic formatting string turned on. So in here, I have the selected measure being returned, but if I go to the format in here, this is where the scaled formatting comes into play. Now I'm using a bit of concatenated strings because I wanna re return the currency type formatting, which includes the brackets that are around the values, the um, rounded brackets specifically, but otherwise, it's basically just returning the scaled formatting. And again, this is a modified pattern from the SQL BI article. I'd recommend reading that just for more details on this. But the pattern here is applied at the actual calculation group level, which means I can apply it to all of the measures in a visual. Same thing for this one. That just is the same pattern for the last one in the list, but this just does not have a currency symbol in here. Now, if I come back over to here, and I'm gonna show you the formatting now that's at the measure level. So every one of these individual measures themselves, let me close out of the filter pane first, just to give a little bit of canvas space back. There we go. So go to sales. Now that has dynamic formatting applied. If I come over to measure to format. There's another set of logic in here. So I have, if I zoom in a little bit for us so we can make this a bit more readable. There we go, uh, perfect. So. I have a selected format, which is basically just grabbing whatever my selection is from the calculation group. That is a hidden measure that is over in the calculation group table by view hidden. We have this, which is just grabbing the text word from whatever my calculation group is. If there's a visual selection, better said. So coming back to sales, going to my format, 
So that's grabbing that here. And there's a few things that are being done within this. So basically, I have a currency symbol in here. So if the selection equals the one that has the currency symbol in there, it starts the concatenation just to return the currency symbol. Otherwise, it doesn't provide anything. And that's just part of that concatenated format string that's down below. So whether or not to include a currency symbol or not, but otherwise, it's that same scaled formatting that's in the measure. And then at the very bottom, if the selection is either of these options, which is per measure with or without the currency symbol, as you can see in here, it will return the scaled format. Otherwise, it will return the original currency format we have up here, which is still going to put the brackets and everything, but non-scaled. So that's how, where if I don't have anything selected from my currency um, calculation group, specifically the currency um, formatting that does the scaling, this will just return a standard format string. So there's the two layers of that, where as long as all of my measures have these into here, by default, if I have not used my calc group, nothing on the page will return scaled formatting. One, because if I apply something at the visual level, sometimes that will break a visual. And also there's oddities as well too. Like if I'm using a certain calculation in a chart and I applied any type of scaled formatting to that. So let's just go ahead and try to add that to this. So scaled formatting dollar symbol. What we get is then the axis starts to look a little weird. And I also lose the ability to see the original value in the tooltip because that gets scaled as well. So there's plenty of reasons why we'd want to apply this at the visual level, either per measure, per visual, but rarely would I want to apply this to the entire report page most of the time. So I really do like the implementation of this. It kind of gives you the option of the levels that you want. And then you can combine dynamic format strings at the measure level with calculation groups at the top level. And as always, this file is going to be available for download for my blog files page. Please feel free to go uh, check that out and download it and copy these patterns into your workbook. But I do like that everything basically gets driven by the count group, but then those two level scenarios really accounts for all of the possible combinations that you'd want to apply these format strings without having to do too much manual effort measure by measure and to make sure that you can keep them off by default. Because my first version of this that I did last year, what we had instead of a single measure for sales, I actually had to create a separate one for dynamic format strings because I didn't want to use the default one in every single location. Now there's one final just caveat that I'll mention is that there is a little bit of a performance cost to doing uh, dynamic format strings. So against really large data sets, it does add a little bit of a slowdown, not a lot. And I am using the fastest pattern, which is what the SQL BI pattern is that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. That will be the quickest way to apply this with the minimal amount of performance cost for these calculations. But that's about it, what I wanted to show for the video. So if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, or any ways that you'd implement this as well, please drop that into the comments section down below. Check out some of my videos here in the upper left as well if you want to see some related content. And as always, liking, commenting, and subscribing will help my channel grow. And I will see you in my next video.